Welcome! I'm so glad you joined us today. Today we light the fourth candle. Our waiting is almost over. Jesus will soon be born. The first week of Advent, we lit the candle of hope. The next week, we lit the candle of peace. Last week, we lit the candle of joy. And this week, we light the candle of love. The candle that we lit today is the candle of love. It's hard for us to imagine that God loves us no matter what. Today, we turn into the inside to remember that love. Focus on the candle. Think of love. Go into that place inside your body where you find love. Find it, enjoy it, rest in it. Offer thanks for it. What is something you love? I love Elsa the guinea pig. I love my mom. I like my sister. She's so nice. Can you say that you love your sister? How about I say I love my cats? This is Kylie. This is Riley. And our cat is Felix. I love my family and my toys. <laughs> and my little brother, and me, and me, I love me too. I have four favorite things. The first thing is my bear, which my mom made, and his name is Bear. And I sleep with him every night. And that is Isabella, my newest American girl girl. And that is Elliot, my second newest American Girl Dog, and that's Caitlin, my third newest doll. And she's the youngest, and they're the same age. It, yeah, it's a stuffed animal of Kevin Polar. I don't have it yet, but um, a fishing rod and a fishing hook. I love Elsa my guinea pig. I love my family. I'm ready to say I love my sister, but I have to conceal my identity. I love my sister. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't hear that up! Kevin Pilar said it. Go away. <laughs> I love this stained glass lamp that my grandfather made for me uh, when I was younger. There's three sides. So like our whole family has one because he's like really good at stained glass. I love my family too. The first Noel the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they
A long, long time ago, God sent an angel to a woman named Mary, who was engaged to a man named Joseph. God has sent me with a message for you. You will have a baby boy and name him Jesus. At the time, the land where Mary and Joseph lived was part of the Roman Empire. The emperor wanted to have a list of all the people in the empire to make sure they paid their taxes. So he ordered everyone to return to the town where their families originally had come from. It's a long way to get from Nazareth to Bethlehem. We better take a donkey to carry all of our things. Mary and Joseph had to travel a long way to get from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Joseph and Mary traveled very slowly because Mary's baby was due to be born soon. When they reached Bethlehem, they had problems finding where to stay. Every house was full and every bed was taken. Sorry, we are full. You can't stay here. Finally, one innkeeper took pity on them. I have no room in my inn. But you can stay in the stable with my animals. And so, in the place where the animals slept, Mary gave birth to Jesus. He's so precious. Let's wrap him up to keep him warm. I prepared some fresh hay in the manger to keep him comfortable. Meanwhile, in the hills and fields outside of Bethlehem, the shepherds looked after their sheep. I'm never going to believe what happened. We were looking after our sheep, and then suddenly a light appeared, and we saw an angel, and we heard a voice. Don't be afraid. I have good news for you and for everyone. Today in Bethlehem, a Savior has been born. You will find the baby lying in a manger. Then a whole bunch of angels appeared and we heard them celebrating. And then the whole sky was lit up and we heard them celebrating and praising. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. So we had to go and check it out. And we went to Bethlehem and found Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. And we told everyone about the amazing things we saw. Wow! I can't believe it! This is absolutely amazing! Praise God! Praise God! When Jesus was born, a brand new bright star appeared in the sky. Some wise men in faraway countries saw the star. This star is a sign! We are very wise. We study the stars. We have read some very old writings that a new star would appear when a great king was born. Let's go on a journey to find the new king. It's going to be a long journey. I'll get the camels ready. Wait, we need to get gifts. The wise men set out to find the new king and bring him gifts. Follow that star. They followed the star towards Bethlehem. It seemed to stop and shine down directly on the place where Jesus was. The wise men entered the house and found Jesus with Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. The wise men gave them gifts. Here's some gold. Here's some frankincense. And here's some myrrh. Mary and Joseph were so pleased and thanked them for the gifts. And that's the story of the first Christmas.
legend of the mistletoe. In Norse mythology, there is a famous story about Freya and her son, Baldur. Baldur the Beautiful was destined to die a young man. As the winter solstice grew close, his mother, Freya, who was the goddess of love and beauty, had a vision of her son's death. To prevent it from occurring, she ran into the forest, asking every living thing to never harm him. The earth, the air, the fire, the water, the trees, and the animals all vowed not to take part and agreed not to harm him. However, she overlooked a small and insignificant mistletoe bush. Balder grew to become the favorite of many gods. Loki, a jealous rival, knew Frey had forgotten about the mistletoe. So he used an arrow carved out of the mistletoe to kill him. For three days, the el each element tried to bring Balder back to life. He was finally restored by Freya, the goddess and his mother. It is said the tears she shed for her son turned into the pearly white berries on the mistletoe plant. It was her, it was her love for him that brought him back to her. She then vowed that mistletoe would never again be used as a weapon and declared it a symbol of love and peace, adding that she would place a kiss on anyone who passed under it and forever protect them. The story ends with a decree that who should ever stand under the humble mistletoe, no harm should befall them, only a kiss, a token of love. The story was eventually integrated into Christian traditions. In Middle Age Europe, mistletoe was abundant at the beginning of the of winter and people started offering it as a gift and decorated their homes with its greenery. It gradually became part of Christmas uh, and New Year traditions and maintained its meaning of love and peace. How do you show love? By giving hugs and kisses. By giving people stuffies. Doing something kind to someone else. And by respecting someone or being very nice to somebody. Being nice and spreading joy. Being kind, sharing, loving and helping them out, and yeah. When you care about someone? <laughs> you can smile, say I love you, just be there or help somebody. Snuggling my mama. Cuddling with pets. Making dinner for someone. Taking care of others.
Let us pray. Dear God, Christmas can be explained in one little four-letter word, love. You sent your gift of pure love to us that first Christmas. Love came down from heaven. Love lay in a scratchy haven manger in a barn in Bethlehem. All of your love came in a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. This final week of Advent, help us to reflect on the magnitude of love that manifests through Jesus. As we prepare for Christmas Day, help us to find love for all and those around us. And see each other and love each other as you do. Amen. It might sound a little cheesy, but love is all around us. It's easy to see and feel love when everything is great, but when your day isn't going the way you'd hoped, I bet if you look, you'll find something or someone that you love. And I know you'll find someone who loves you right back. So go into this week and know that you are surrounded by love. One person that I know we all love is our dear Susan Yemma. She's such a wonderful soul and each of us are blessed to have her as part of our lives. For the past 10 years, Susan has led the children of St. Mark's by the hand as they grow in their relationship with their faith and God. Susan, we love you. Congratulations, Susan. It's your 10th anniversary in leadership with our children's programs at St. Mark's. Please enjoy this presentation of special memories of your very creative and caring contributions to our church families, always shared by you enthusiastically and with love. From all of us, Susan, thank you so much.
Hallelujah, hallelujah.